Hello, I'm Wendy. Today I'm painting watercolour trees and flowers grown by a river and it's a tutorial. It's a simple composition with the focal point being the tree that's taking up most of the space. I've suggested some depth in the picture, some background, by putting in a bank with a few bushes just in the distance there and the reflections of them in the water. They both are separated there by a very thin white line which adds some interest and show the separation there but it does actually appear in life and if you do look at um, the riverbanks with the trees and the reflections you very often do see this dividing little white line of light reflecting there. There's quite a lot of foreground with the grasses and the flowers and I know people find um, do find difficulty with these areas of foreground I like them, I like the messiness and the busyness of them and it gives you the opportunity to um, use different brush strokes and to use your rigger. So I'll be explaining in detail how you can tackle this foreground um, later on in the video. I'll show you how to preserve those light areas of the leaves and the pink flowers as well and we'll be using masking fluid to do that. There isn't a photographic reference for this because I did work, took the ideas from some sketches and several photographs. I do have a drawing and if you'd like to work from that drawing and do the picture in a very similar way to, to what I did then um, it is downloadable and there's a link in the description box. If you don't want to do that I'm hoping that you can pick up some information and some ideas using the techniques that I'm going to demonstrate um, to use in your own paintings. If you do that then please do post them on my Facebook group it would be really interesting to see what you come up with. This is the drawing I started off with and um, you'll see as I go through the video that I did actually change it somewhat. I did put some extra branches growing up the side of the left hand side of the tree there. I'm applying some masking fluid with a very small brush on just a few of the areas in the foreground where the pink flowers will be. I didn't want to put too many of them in. I didn't want it to overpower the um, the painting but just a suggestion of some of the spring flowers there and also putting on some slightly larger marks just some random strokes for the very light yellow leaves. I'm working about seven inches by seven inches here on a Saunders Waterford 140 pound knot block which is a really nice surface that um, because it's a block it doesn't cockle. When the masking fluid was dry I added a foreground wash of a very very dilute light red. I did this because I sort of saw this warm colour in the foreground and also I do like to get the white covered in a picture that I'm working on. I find it very distracting to have large areas of white. So this very very dilute mix of, um, of the light red is going on there. I didn't wait for that to dry um, I wanted these background washes to sort of blend into each other and the wash I'm putting on now is ultramarine with a touch of cadmium red to show the colour of the water and again I wanted to keep this really pale um, you can go over the tree trunks because they're going to be a lot darker but I did want this to be really pale and it is going to dry back even paler and as you can see it's all keeping a little bit um, wet and the next stage is going to be putting the green on for the beginning of the riverbank and uh, that's coming up in just a second here we are so the green is going on and it's blending in a little bit with the river and with the foreground light red which is what I wanted I didn't want them to all be separated with hard lines I wanted them to blend together this tends to be the way I work I like to put these background washes on all blending in together usually let them dry and then work on the top. The base blue for most of the greens I use in this picture is cobalt and here it's mixed with cadmium yellow light and a little bit of sap green. When it's totally dry what I'm doing now is I'm, um, I'm putting on some masking fluid with a rigger. I'm putting in some of the very light grasses that I saw in the foreground. I overdid it a little bit and you'll see later on I knock back some of these lines. I could have put these on the white paper but I think sometimes it makes the grasses look a little bit stark so what I did this time was I put them over those light foreground washes. 
If they do look too stark, then you can always put a very light wash over them with something like a very light red again, or very diluted raw sienna. My greens, as I said for this picture, I'm mixing with the base of the cobalt blue. I'm using raw sienna, a yellow, um, probably a pale yellow, and some burnt sienna to mix the greens. If you're unsure about the greens palette, then do as I'm doing and do some colour swatches before you start using them. It's always a good idea. And remember to label them so you'll know what to do next time. The background was um, really quite warm. There wasn't the sky there, there were fields behind. And it was quite a warm feel to it. So again, I used the light red there. This is the first wash going on. And you'll see in a, a second or two that um, I'm going to be dropping the bushes in there with the greens that I mixed. I'm using the side of the brush with a fairly stiff mix. You just have to judge it. You're working wet into wet here. You don't want these bushes to be too hard edged um, because it is in the distance. So try and keep them nice and soft. As it's drying, you can add a darker mix to the base there. I kept the mix for the bushes on the warm side because you'll see what I'm going to do is um, paint the reflections underneath and I wanted those to be a bit cooler. So there was more blue in the reflection mix than there were in the mix that I used for the bushes. I put the reflections in the water, again using a wet into wet technique. Because the previous wash was dry, then I very carefully, without disturbing the paint underneath as much as I could, I, I re-wet the area of the river. Now you do have to re-wet the whole area. You don't just wet where the reflections are going to end or you're going to get a hard line there. So re-wet the whole of the river area and then hold the paper at a bit of an angle and put the colour on. You can see I carefully left that um, little white line there that I was talking about before. Getting the right concentration of your mix and the right wetness of the paper is again down to practice with watercolour. If you're a bit unsure about this stage, then have a bit of practice on a, on a scrap of paper. If you find it quite off-putting, then you could really, thinking about it, miss out this stage. And when you paint the water area, make it darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. Have some sort of graduated wash and that will give you some interest in the background and will probably stand pretty well for, um, for the reflections. As you can see, I'm trying to achieve a mirror image of the bushes. While this um, paint is wet, you can always add a little bit of extra dark colour underneath the, um, the little white line there, which can be quite effective. We're now looking at some of the greens for the foreground and I'm adding more of the yellow and the raw sienna to the mix. And you can also add a little bit of sap green in here, which is a lovely green for spring colours. So again, experiment with some of these greens. And um, if you're a bit unsure, then do some colour swatches before you start. You should have a nice spring green light yellow sort of wash that you put on for the first wash. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and retain some of that when we're putting on the following washes. I wet the area with some clean water because I wanted to get some of the first foliage that I put on there working wet into wet. So you can see here, I'm using the side of the brush. I'm varying the strokes and I'm varying the types of effects that I get. If you put some of these strokes onto the area that's not covered in paint, the river area, then you're going to get some dry brush work. Where it's going on where it's wet, then you're going to get some wet into wet. So all the time when I'm doing these foregrounds, I'm trying to vary the types of marks that I'm making and I'm varying whether it's wet into wet, wet onto dry and whether it's dry brush. You can see where the um, masking fluid is that I put on for the 
flowers and also for all those grasses I did in the foreground. All the marks are put on fairly randomly. I think the main secret to getting these foregrounds working is to, apart from changing the brush strokes and the wet into wet, wet onto dry as I've said, I think the most important thing is getting a change of tone in there so that you've got some dark tones against light tones. This will give you the impression of depth in the foreground foliage and it's really important. Sometimes it works better than others. It's quite an experimental way of working. You're not really in control. But if you do as I said and change the tones and keep them different, you've got nice light areas, nice dark areas, it will give the impression, especially when you put some detail over the top, of um, a nice foliage area with some depth in there. I speeded the next little bit of the video up for you and um, as you can see I'm continuing here putting some of the darks in. It's mainly dry now, apart from a few of the um, very the apart from a few of the areas at the front. And I changed over to a rigger, and this is what I meant by putting some more of the detailed work over these um, random marks. It's your signature that's going to de decide what these are going to look like. I use a rigger and you can see I use sort of um, dotting around to make the leaves and the marks on there. But using a rigger or a very small brush, putting as much detail on as you want, then you've got these soft areas underneath and these strokes for the grasses and the leaves on the top. I like to work like this. It's quite a relaxing way of working actually, believe it or not. And you can put some of the taller grasses on there. You've not got to worry too much about it. It's a loose way of painting. You've not got to worry that everything looks exactly as it does in nature. What you're doing is you're putting strokes on there to represent what's in nature. And as long as you've got some nice colours working together and your watercolours working, you're going to have a nice foreground. What I did next was I put on some of the darker leaves on the tree. Um, I left the masking fluid on for the time being for the lighter ones. And then I mixed up some greens. Again, do a few colour swatches. You're using the blue as the base. All the greens should harmonise. I certainly wouldn't change blues at this stage. I'm putting some leaf strokes on, um, particularly around where some of the, um, the light yellow leaves are going to be. I didn't want to overdo this. I do have a tendency to make my pictures far too busy. You may well think this is a little bit too busy. And I am trying my best um, to leave lighter areas or empty areas in a picture to make them a little bit more restful. So I deliberately left this water. Well, I've tried to leave as much of this water as I could untouched. As I said, I am getting pretty busy with my paintings these days. But you can see the strokes going on here and um, I think I've just about almost finished with this now. The next stage was the tree trunks and um, for this picture I'm, I'm using so many greens um, I felt I wanted the trees to sort of blend in rather than being very brown is you we tend to do tree trunks brown don't we too much really because they tend to be more of a gray or they tend to be more of a greeny color uh, with the moss on them which is what I'm doing here I found a good mix for um for tree trunks is Prussian blue with burnt umber it gives you a nice dark green and um, you can add some ultramarine burnt sienna mixes to it as well but I do like that and this is what I'm using at the moment. As I was working I was trying to vary the tones in the, um, in the tree trunks. So we've got a few darker areas in there. I didn't want them to be too dark, it's just getting a, a balance of the tones of the trees against the rest of the picture. And you can adjust that um, as you go along. I hadn't really got any preconceptions of this picture when I started. I was just going to start it and see what happened basically, <laughs> Work, working around the picture. There were some changes that were needed um, towards the end, a bit of fine tuning, a bit more than I usually like to do, but um, I think that's part and parcel of 
build a good picture. At this stage you can add um, some more darks to the tree, you could give it more form. Um, what I'm doing here is mixing up um, a much stronger mix which I'm going to drop into the tree. Um, I'm dotting it about a bit to, um, to try and suggest some difference um, of tones in the, in the tree trunks here. Not making everything too samey. And then it's up to you what to do with the tree. You can add some more texture. Um, I got a little bit of card that I dragged through the paint. I don't think it made an awful lot of difference, but um, you could try out some textural effects here. And then I used a very dark paint again with um, a brush with a nice fine tip on it to suggest some little bits of bark sticking out or bits of ivy. I don't like to see tree trunks looking too smooth, um, particularly these trees in the woodlands. They've got a very um, bitty sort of outline, haven't they, with all these ivy going on and twigs and bark. And I think it gives the, um, the branches more character if you can do that. The smaller branches and the twigs I'm putting on with this very dark mix and um, I'm using a rigger again. I do like using the rigger for this sort of work. Now this darker mix would be the burnt umber and the Prussian blue and possibly a little bit of ultramarine and brown in there. Let the um, small branches and twigs intertwine the, um, the leaves that you've put on there. When everything was dry I rubbed off the masking fluid and um, put on the um, very pale yellow with maybe a touch of sap green onto the leaves. Something like cadmium yellow light would do the trick. And you can see it um, really starts to come to life when you get these, um, these nice yellows on here. This is the thing about watercolour, in order to maintain or in order to retain these nice light colours you really have to use masking fluid. You couldn't put these yellows onto even a very light red background or light blue. You, you wouldn't get this nice transparency that you get. And similarly with the um, pinks that are going on to the flowers, they really do have, need to be masked out um, if you're not going to be using an opaque colour. I'm not putting on too much of the pink here. As I said, I didn't want it to overwhelm them, and I'm putting some lighter and darker pinks on there. I'm using Cotman Mauve for the pinks. I've speeded up the next um, little bit of the video. I'm just adding some of the darker, some more of the darker greens around the yellows. It's a touch darker than the first um, lot of leaves that I put on. Again, I don't want to overdo it, but I think just a few dark touches would, um, would help the composition. Putting a mount around it, um, the grasses were far too intrusive and very, very white, so I put a very pale wash of light red over them and then went in with a darker green to just add a few more darks between the grasses and a little bit along the front of the painting. And this was the finished painting and I was fairly happy with it as um, just a simple little study, but the composition was bugging me a little bit. I, I felt the tree trunks were too straight. I didn't really like the composition. It was giving me a sort of L shape with a prominent vertical and I could have left it but I thought no I need to make a few changes on this. You may prefer this version to the one I finished up with. Um, let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested on your opinions. 
I used white gouache with a touch of the river colour to alter the shape of that right hand tree and make it slope a little bit. I also painted in another small branch and a few twigs on the left hand side as you can see here. As a tip I would really recommend um, mixing white gouache, white opaque gouache with some of your watercolours to make adjustments. I managed to adjust the slope of the tree by doing that and also you can add some extra leaves by mixing that very light yellow with the um, opaque white gouache as well. This can be useful for breaking up some of the areas of the tree trunk where you hadn't put the masking fluid on. It can also be useful for putting a few extra grasses in as well. Well this seems to have been a very chatty video. I do hope that you found something useful in it. Um, as I said you, you might want to have a go at doing this picture as I did using the template or have a go at your own. I hope to see some paintings on my Facebook page. Do subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss what's coming up next. Till then, bye for now and happy painting.